Hello, hello, everybody. It's Jackie with Jackie's Recent Things. Today, we're going to learn how to sew a wired bow. So, I did a previous tutorial. This one is so much easier. You're going to love it. With your tutorial, you received your templates for the tail and your templates for the bow. You don't need to cut out one big piece. You just need to cut this out. And what I did was I used... Um, poster board to make my permanent template to trace around um, if whatever you have on hand I had some foam board on hand to create my uh, bow template and I marked my center which I'll show you why I do that so let's get started now, I have already cut the fabric in your um, tutorial that you received. You re you got the fabric cut. Okay, for the bow tail, I want to show you how to iron it. This has got quite a bit of wrinkle in it. We don't want that wrinkle in it before we sew. You, can't, uh, you cannot iron really straight to felt. So, what we're going to do is I'm going to take my fabric... And I'm going to lay that over my felt, like so. Check to see. The wrinkles are out, so we're ready to go. Okay, so this is the piece of fabric that I want on the bottom, or the piece of felt that I want on facing the bottom of my bow, or my fabric, which is going to be the blue. We're going to face that right side up like so this is going to be my bottom fabric that you will by or felt that you will see on the bottom side of the bow so you want to make sure you stack your fabric like this and when you think about what fabric when you turn this right side out this will be on the bottom and then the blue will be covering the back of the fabric before we sew the bow tail right here on this line and you will see why later on we're going to cut just a small little notch okay nothing big we're going to need that on the bow tail when i traced my template and this is why i marked center lined it up traced around it and then i flip it over and then when I flip it over, I scoop my template so it goes just over this the line, and then I trace my tail. Okay? Don't really need to pin it, but what I do just to keep my pieces together is I take a clip, and I'm going to clip it. For the bow itself... I've already ironed it down so you didn't have to watch. And once again, this is why I marked center on my bow is because when I come over, I want to make sure that these lines line up. So once again, trace, 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 and then flip it straight over so it lines up. And like I said before, you don't really need to pin this together, but I've just got a little clip on mine. So let's go over to the sewing machine. So this is going to be super easy to sew because we're not having to mess, we're not going to mess with the wire yet. We actually won't do that till the very end.
So I'm going to make sure that my fabric is inserted in. And then I've just got a nice straight stitch. Now I've already tested my tension and everything, and so we're ready to go. Drop your needle, forward stitch, back stitch to lock that in. And I'm going to go a little bit slower so you can watch me go with the curves. Now I hold my fabric pretty far back here so I can steer my fabric. But what I've done is with this template, you just take this line and you put it right in the center of your sewing foot. <clears throat> and you just sew along that line. If you see your felt starting to bubble up a little bit, just smooth it back down. to the end, lock your stitching again because we are leaving both ends open for this bow. I have a thread ripper on the back of my machine. That's what I just used to rip my thread. So we're going to come around here and we're going to go down the other side. Like I said, we're going to leave both ends open. set that one aside let's get over to our bow tail now when it comes to the bow tail I kind of like to just start in the middle of mine when I sew it now there's no reason to lock the stitch in because when we're gonna lock it in by coming right back through that stitch that's how we're gonna lock it in Turning corners is really easy. You take your needle and put it right dead in the corner of your line. Lift your foot up, leave your needle down, and pivot your fabric till it lines up again. Same thing, once you get in the V of it, leave your needle right in the V. Leave your needle down, pick your sewing foot up, and turn your fabric. Get to your corner. Once again, leave your needle down, pick your sewing foot up, and turn your fabric.
right back in the stitch. So yes, you're going to go all the way around this and you're not going to leave it open. Now remember that notch that we cut? This is when that notch comes in handy. This is also where we're going to put our wire in later on. So there's our little notch and we're just going to finish cutting this notch out. Just be careful, don't cut through your stone spot. Okay, and I also want to show this up close and on the sewing camera because it's hard to see on my overhead camera. We're going to start cutting these out. And the first thing that I like to do is I like to cut in here. Now you want to cut as close in this V as you possibly can so that you'll get a nice crisp V. And you'll do the same thing on both edges. Cut as close as you can without cutting through your thread so that you get a nice crisp V. Okay? Let's go back to the overhead camera and finish cutting this out so you can see me cut the whole thing out. Now, when you're cutting this out, you kind of want to go as close to your stitch as you can without cutting through your stitch. I'd say I'm about an eighth of an inch off of my stitch. Also, on your points here, you're going to kind of want to nip that. That way you don't have bulk in your points. So you want to get on your points as close as you can. That way they'll be, the, they'll be pointier. And now that we got that one cut out, activate my iron. We're going to turn it right side out. Now I have this neat little thing my friend gave me for pointed edges. It's called a bone folder. You can get it on Amazon. So we're going to turn this right side out now. And I go ahead and poke my corners out, then pull it through. The one thing that I didn't like about my previous tutorial was having to like sew around the wire. I was constantly, constantly in fear of breaking a needle. And I mean, I broke a couple. So this is just so much easier. I'm taking my bone folder and just really crisping my corners out, my edges. With this, I'm able to make so many mo more bows a day because I'm not um, sewing the um, wire in.
Okay, now that we have that straightened out, we're going to smooth it. down nice and neat make sure it's all nice and smooth straightened out and then we're going to iron our edges down Always take the point of your iron into your points. And now we'll set that aside. Just sell that in a minute, put the polishing edge on. <clears throat> Let's cut out our bow piece. Our trace mark, we're going to go straight across it. And then once again, we're going to want to cut as close as we can. I can cut about an eighth of an inch. That way we don't have all that bulk. I get to this point, I've got to pick it up to cut it, y'all. Once again, we come down to that edge. We're going to cut straight across there. And now what you want to do when you open this up, make sure your you see your fabric side up. Go between your fabric side and your other piece. Go all the way through with your arm. Grab it and just pull it through to get the edges out nice and clean. We're just going to put our hand in there and roll them out. Super easy. Once we get our edges all nice and out, once again, we're going to hit it with our iron. Now I go along my edge first. Believe it or not, your iron will hit this edge. I go along that first. Make sure I got a little spot here that needs to come out a little bit more. And then I iron it down.
Now I have enough white in this fabric that I don't need to change that I'm not going to change out my thread color. Now, while we're ironing and getting ready to sew, we're going to get ready the center part for our bow. Now, I've kept a lot of scraps from the fabric I've cut. So, I'm looking to see if I've got a good scrap really quick. Because it really needs to be four and a half inches. So I can't find one big enough, so we'll just cut one really quick. I'd have to do this um, anyway for other bows that I'm doing, so that's fine. So I'm just going to line that up. Like I said, I'm cutting this four and a half inches wide. And then to cushion it, we're going to take a piece of felt cut two inches. Now this piece really only needs to be about 10 inches. But like I said, I'm making other bows, so I'm just going to go ahead and get this ready. Now you can just use the fabric that you had used. I'm just choosing to use um, yellow because I didn't have a big enough scrap from cutting that. So we're going to lay this in the center. Be careful when you're doing this. Don't let your iron hit the felt because if your iron hits the felt, it will kind of like melt to the iron. You don't want that.
this iron that I use, I love it. It's the Black & Decker Eversteam, and it is awesome. I got it at Walmart. When I bought it, it was 50 bucks. Now they're like 20-something. Now I'm going to put a couple clips just to hold this in place. I'm a huge fan of sewing clips, y'all. I like them better than pinning. Okay. So now we're ready to sew. So let me get my sewing machine back in the right place. There we go. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to, I'm just going to sew my um, outside, my bow uh, centerpiece. So I'm going to come to the far right side first, and we're going to sew that edge down. <laughs> The other reason I'm doing this because my bobbin looks like it's about ready to run out and I don't want my bobbin to run out when I'm putting the <clears throat> polished edge on my bow. Okay, so now we're going to flip this right side up and we're going to go directly down the center of the bow. Now on my sewing machine, I have... Um, measuring marks that let me know from here to here it's three and a half inches uh, if you don't have one or excuse me an inch and a half if you don't have one of those um you can just get a piece of tape or something as your guideline measure from your needle and put your piece of tape right here for your inch and a half Excuse me, one inch, because this is two inches wide. So one inch over. And now we're going to come and put another stitch on this side.
so we're gonna set this aside and my bobbin is about ready to run out so let me change my bobbin out really quick because like I said when I'm doing my polishing edge I don't want my bobbin to run out I probably have enough to do one edge along there but I'm not going to take the chance when I'm doing these in bulk I have just I, I wind up a bunch of bobbins okay so now we're going to do our polishing edge and it's just going to be about a quarter inch in so the outside of your fabric is going to be on the outside of your foot no need to lock your stitch in You want to make sure that your bottom is open though we're still not going to close our bottom and make sure that it is flip it around and just go down the other side make making sure that this is as open as possible Okay, now we're going to set that aside. And once again, as we get back to the bow tail, um, because the center is going to be covered up, I like to start in the center. One of the biggest questions I get when it comes to sewing is how do you know when you get to the edge how do you know when to turn your foot there are sewing foots that actually have the measurements on the feet but on this one it's just as you get into your little notch here that's a quarter inch so just as my tip hits that in the notch you see there's a v here in my foot there's a v here in my foot so just as my tip hits into that V that's a quarter inch and that's when you need to turn it how do you know when to turn at the angle you're gonna sew until your needle gets right here parallel to your V so right there parallel to the V and then turn your foot
like I said, if you have a hard time knowing when to turn your project, there are sewing feet that have the measurement markings so that you can have confidence in knowing when to turn. Before you get back down to here, you want to trim this little bit of thread because you don't want to sew over it. Then to lock your stitch in, you're going to go right back through the stitch where you started. Set that aside, and now we're ready to finish things up. All right, let's go back to our other camera. Let me get my iron out of the way so I don't burn myself on that because we don't need it anymore. Now we need our hot glue gun. Okay, first things first, I have a pair of utility scissors. If you do a lot of sewing, you have your fabric scissors and then your utility scissors. What we're going to use to wire this bow is 4-inch chicken net wire. You can get this on Amazon. I developed this template specifically for this 4-inch chicken net wire so that you'd be able to feed it right through our first piece we're going to cut and i recommend that you keep the box because it makes it easier to spin the wire out of later on our first piece we're going to cut it 28 inches There's our first piece and our second and you're going to cut two more pieces seven inches each Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is I cut 
a bunch of white fabric scraps just for this. I cut them two inches by five inches because we want to cover up the wire pricklies. So I'm going straight across the wire pricklies with my hot glue gun. And then I'm going down again. And then we're just going to fold that over. We're going to set that one aside. Now we're just, you just need to do one side on the smaller pieces. And we're doing this because it makes it easier to put the wire through and to keep those wires from stabbing through the felt. All right, we're going to set that one aside. Now on the long piece, you need to do both ends. Like I said, I'm making sure that I hit the tip of the wire pricklies, we'll call them prickles, with my hot glue to take the sharp edge off as I come across. Alright, so while that one cools down, our bigger piece will start with our smaller pieces. Super easy. There's no really reason to wire the tips of our bow. So this is why we left this open on the back. Because now we're just going to insert our wire. Just like so. Flip it around. And insert our wire. just like so now you don't have to close that up you'll see why here in a minute so now we're going to come over and do our bow piece with our longer piece so you're going to kind of kind of start down here and you're going between your layers of felt. That's the purpose for both of the pieces of felt is so the chicken wire won't show through the fabric. So insert that through. Typically, I can make it to right here in the center when inserting it. And then I'm going to flip it around. Reach my hand in. grab it and finish pulling it through just like that Okay, now our bow is all wired up. We don't need the edges to be wired up. They're stabilized by our finishing stitch. So now we're ready to assemble our bow. So the first thing we're going to do is roll this over. Find our center. Roll our other piece over. Find our center. Cut our 
excess thread off. And then what we're going to do, we're going to put a bead of hot glue on the inside here just to seal our wire in. And then put a bead of glue on the outside. Felt loves hot glue, so this is okay. And fold that over. Do the same thing here. Fold it over. Got a piece of wire for some reason poking up, so I'm just trying to. There we go. Flatten it back down. Bring our bow tail over. And once again, this is going to be super easy to center up on our bow. So we're going to put a bead of hot glue on either side of our fabric. Like so. And then we'll hold it down. And you're going to want to wait till it cools to do the next part. Now what I'm doing several of these, um, I'm going to glue this down, set it to the side, glue down, set to the side, glue down, set to the side. Okay, so this piece, your centerpiece only needs to be about 10 inches. We're going to hot glue across that. Make sure it's centered. And now before you do the next part, you have to wait till that cools. And typically what I've done, what I do while that's, while that's cooling me, I have more and I just usually leave it sitting there. But I'm going to go ahead and cut these down to 10 inches for other bows that I'm making. While that's cooling, I'm always multitasking to keep moving forward. My whole idea when I make things is keep moving forward, keep moving forward, keep moving forward, and have not that much wait time. Okay, so now we're going to flip our bow over. We're going to scrunch this up just a little bit. Just a smidge. Just a little bit of a smush. We're going to pull our tail over. Hold it and flip. Now on first piece, where we I'm going to come across here with a hot glue bead. And we're going to have to hold this till it cools. If you don't hold this till it cools, it's just going to 
pop apart and you don't want that. I put my glue on low, my hot glue gun on low temp so I'm not having to wait as long. This convenience of having a low temp, high temp gun. I'm going to cut just a little bit of this off. So what I'm going to do to polish this up is I'm going to fold this in. Put some hot glue in the center. And we're just going to kind of like fold that in half. Like so. That way we don't have any open edges to our fabric. Now that everything has cooled down, we make our bow adjustments, turn our edges up, and fluff our wire up and out. I stick my hands in it to make sure it's even loop. And there you have it. This chicken wire is stouter than, it is a whole lot stronger than wiring through the edges. It's a whole lot quicker, a whole lot simpler, and just so much easier. I really hope y'all enjoyed this upgraded sewn bow wired tutorial. Thank y'all so much for joining me. Bye, y'all.